Hi everyone, it's Nikki at the Genomics Corps here at the UNT Health Science Center. Uh, here's an additional video that serves as a part of a series of videos demonstrating some of the services we offer. These videos are meant to be used as a training resource for our staff as well as for customers get, to get a better look into the services that we provide. So today I'm briefly going over the qubit workflow for nucleic acid. This method is standard with our typical QC workflow with any library prep or sequencing services, but we also offer it as a standalone service. For this video, I'm using the broad range double-stranded DNA kit, but we do offer services for quantifying double or single-stranded DNA as well as RNA through high sensitivity and broad range kits. So before starting your assay, you'll definitely want to equilibrate your standards to room temperature, which are kept in the fridge. And this takes about 30 minutes. So during those 30 minutes, I like to take that time to set up my tubes and label them, which is something that I had already done prior to this video. So next, we'll calculate the appropriate volume of working solution by using a one to 200 ratio of reagent to buffer. And that way we know the appropriate size tube to select. I always label the tube with the type of kit that I'm using as well as the date. This mixture is pretty stable for up to 24 hours. If you're making it ahead of time, plan on keeping it wrapped in foil and in the fridge, the reagent is light sensitive. So to make the working solution, you'll need the appropriate buffer and reagent. We keep the reagent in a dark box to prevent exposure to light. Make sure you double check the label on both the buffer and the reagent to make sure you're using the appropriate solutions. So next we'll make the one to 200 reagent to buffer working solution, uh, immediately replacing the reagent back into the black box to prevent exposure to light. Gently invert this to mix and your working solution is ready. Before going forward with the assay on all of my samples, I always check the standards first. That way, if something is wrong with the working solution, I know before using up valuable samples and time. The standards will be labeled one and two, and you'll add 190 microliters of the working solution to each of the labeled standard tubes, as well as 10 microliters of the respective room temperature standard. Gently vortex and spin down each standard before reading on the fluorometer. Since we are using the broad range double-stranded DNA kit, we'll select the DSDNA option and then the DSDNA broad range. It'll prompt you to either read a sample or new standards. Each time you're running a qubit, especially with a new working solution, you always want to read in new standards. If the instrument reads in both standards and doesn't give an error, then you're good to start prepping your samples for the rest of the assay. I use an auto rep pipetter from Raynan, one to save on plastic usage, but also to save on time. Typically, it's only suggested that you even use the qubit if you're assaying under 20 samples and anything over that, it's actually suggested to use a plate reader. But until we get our plate reader in, this is what we have to work with. So each sample is getting 198 microliters of working solution, and we're going to add two microliters of sample. So each tube will have a total working volume of 200 microliters. And uh, rather than having tubes in each row, it is easier to open and close tubes if you stagger them every other row, which is what I'm doing now. So after each tube receives the working solution, I quickly vortex and spin down samples prior to loading two microliters into the assay. Each tube is then briefly vortexed and centrifuged. And once that is done, we are then ready to read in our samples. So there is an option to adjust the volume of the sample loaded, um, but you would also need to adjust the amount of working solution so that the total volume stays at 200 microliters. So we'll now read in and record each of the samples. For any of the samples that read out of range, I typically run those samples using a high sensitivity kit before jumping to the conclusion that nothing is present in that sample. Um, this is because the broad range kit does only measure down to one nanogram per microliter. Once all your measurements are complete, you can export your data through the USB port on the side of the instrument. So just plug in your USB, hit data, export, and then select 
the assay from that day. Export and you're done. Just a reminder, I've teamed up with Illumina to host a quarterly happy hour for anyone interested in networking with local genomic cores in the DFW area. Definitely contact me if you are interested in this and I will get you on the mailing list to receive invites to these events. Thanks for watching. Till next time.